Oh, I don't know about you, Brian, but that intro just gets me all hyped up every single time I hear it. <laughs> Super hyped. I love to see oh, it. Man. And uh, now we just have the three-day countdown going into the habit. That's very appropriate. An excellent segue into the topic of our conversation today there, Brian. Way to, way to just drop that bomb here. So I took segues 101, <laughs> my friend. Like a sniper, if you will, uh, which is another great segue into our topic of conversation today, which is what the heck is happening in the crypto market right now? And uh, I am thrilled to have Brian here with me from the Santiment team. And of course, Santiment is one of the top um, data analysis tools uh, for crypto, where they basically take all of the on-chain data for the um, the space's top assets and just make it useful for us. And for me personally, it's, it's brought my port um, so much wealth seems not like the right word, but it's it's really helped me out in my trading, in my content. I can't say enough about it. And it's just such a pleasure to have you here with us, Brian. So thank you, my friend. How's your day been uh, been off to so far? Yeah, great to be here, Trav. It's been good. Uh, certainly a lot of news stories circulating right now as we get into the home stretch of the Bitcoin halving. And obviously there's a lot of bearishness going around with markets retracing 15 to 18%. Uh, since the all-time high uh, roughly a month ago, uh, about five weeks ago to be precise. So we are seeing some interesting commentary going out there in the, in the media and through the crowd discussions. Um, but there are some positive signs too in, regarding whale and shark behavior and how likely it is for us to see a quick bounce uh, once the, the FUD kind of gets too too enormous and and i expect things to start turning around i can't say the exact timing but uh i don't think we will dip much lower as long as sharks and whales continue to look uh quite bullish themselves and we'll get into that as we as we kick things off here yeah, I, I appreciate the little sprinkling of uh, of bullish and, and value prospect for this conversation. And I just want to quickly add to that because I've been keeping up to date on all the metrics on sentiment since this mega turn in, in direction began over just about a week ago. Now, since probably the last weekend or even just before last weekend. And uh, I've been finding the same, same conclusions that while sentiment and just overall market trend has taken a pretty significant shift. There's a lot to be excited about and a lot to be hopeful about as well here. So I'm really excited to be able to share that with uh, with everyone who's tuned in here so far. Looks like we've got a good uh, a good number of people hanging out with us at the moment here. So I appreciate all of you for for taking the time here. And uh, I just want to propose a couple of things here. I want to I want to just kind of set the stage and and mention what our objectives are for today. So first things first, uh, I think it's important that we actually see what's happening at the moment. And when I say that, I think it's important to dive into what the on-chain data is showing us. Also, what social sentiment is showing us, because we've had this conversation before, the correlation between sentiment and price movement and predicting future price movement is very strongly correlated. So we're going to dive into that as well. And then finally, we're going to talk about, you know, the impact of the Bitcoin having, which is in three days. That's that's mind blowing to me. So this is coming up quick and this is a huge catalyst for all of crypto. And uh, before we dive into it, I just want to say one last thing here. While Bitcoin has had a dump, the major alts have had an even more significant dump. So I'm hoping that through our, our conversation today, we'll be able to kind of dive into um, some more understanding of what's happening there and what we might be able to expect in the, the coming weeks as well here. So Brian, how does that sound? So it's wonderful. Yeah, we're, we're definitely in the home stretch. So I'm excited to see how this is going to play out. You know, we saw the Ethereum merge about a year and a half ago, for example, being uh, seeing a big run up going into the final two weeks of it. And then we saw a dump right as it was happening. We're seeing history kind of repeat itself now. And of course, after the merge happened, there was a couple of weeks of kind of everyone shrugging and saying, oh, I guess this was never that big of a deal. And then all of a sudden prices take off. So 
let's see if that theory comes true again. And um, what I can do is share my screen here so we can get some visuals going on That'd be fantastic. exactly how, uh, how the possible scenarios can play out. Perfect. Let's please let's let's get right into it here. It's also very reminiscent of the the recent ETF um, saga, where it was very much a buy the rumor, sell the news event. Uh, but then, as of course, after price settled in the week week and a half following the ETF launch, we saw the massive price bump for most assets out there. Bitcoin, of course, making new all-time highs. Solana jumping close within sixty dollars of its all-time high. Ethereum just rocketing. Um, so I'm I'm anticipating potentially a similar trajectory with this upcoming Bitcoin having event here. But uh, yeah, Brian, let's uh, let's dive in. I'm loving this. Uh, we're getting a little bit of entertainment here. This is this yeah is the the meta. I was checking the stream. I, you know, for those watching on the Santman stream right now, uh, I don't know if Trav's audio is coming in. I think they may only be able to hear me. This mm -hmm. is kind of an experimental uh, process going on right now, but we'll we'll make the best of it. And of course, Trav will have your recording after this, anyways, which we could always upload to. The Santam YouTube video, so I'm not too stressed about it. Perfect, perfect. Uh, this is hello to the Santam crew. I don't usually throw out hearts here, but it seemed appropriate. Appreciate all of you guys for being here. Let's dive right in there, Brian. Love it. Yeah, so we look at the last seven days here, and of, of course, it's going to be a sea of red, just as most of you would suspect. There are a few outliers. You know, Una said Leo is actually up about a percentage point over the past week, but you can see just going down here, the overall market cap in crypto is down about 10.5%, while volume is actually up 17%. Uh, Bitcoin itself is down a little over 10%, sitting way down at 61.7K right now. Um, Ethereum down, I think it, it breached 3,000 and is just above it at this time, but I wouldn't be surprised if it falls back down after some of the limit orders finish filling in at that big round number. Uh, Solana especially has taken a big beating down 24%. Uniswap, uh, as many of you may have heard, the SEC is threatening some uh, action against them. So they've taken quite a hit from uncertain traders who don't wanna be near it at this time. Um, and many meme coins, by the way, are down huge. We can look at them, <coughs> or the markets, I should say, by watch list, and you can see by according to different sectors, you know, liquid staking derivatives down 16%, meme coins down 23%, layer twos down 26, social uh, assets down 32%, gaming 28, real world assets 21, AI and big data 25. ERC20 is surprisingly holding up quite well in comparison to the rest of these, down 12%. NFTs just getting crushed, negative 32%. This is just in the past week, folks. DeFi, 20% drop. BSC and Binance Chain actually doing quite well, uh, only down 4.5%, which is a big win if you have a portfolio full of Binance Chain assets. And then Layer 1's down a modest 16.5%. So, yeah, it's, it's certainly been retraceville as of late, but... You know, the question, of course, everyone's asking is, will it continue? Is this a big dip by opportunity? And that's where we want to focus our attention onto whales and sharks and kind of what the crowd is uh, feeling because prices tend to go the same direction as whale and shark addresses tend to move them. And they tend to go the opposite direction of the little tiny fish traders out there who... Um, don't have much impact on the markets. So if we look look at uh, the overall amount of BTC held specifically by wallets that have 10 to 10,000 BTC, they've been growing actually quite significantly. So this is, this is why I'm not overly concerned with this drop. I see that going back to February 4th, that roughly 10 weeks ago, They've accumulated just about 200,000 Bitcoin collectively 
over those past 10 weeks. That's massive. A little bit concerning is the fact that Tether and USD coin, they're going down. So clearly there's a lot of swapping of stable coins for Bitcoin at this time, but it's not, not crazy significant right now. Um, and I still, you know, the, the number one thing that I'm looking at right now is just the overall amount of Bitcoin held and it's still going in the right direction to me. So when you see price go like this, but Bitcoin whales kind of, I don't know, just drawing from here, they're, they're going like this. I'll even make it a little lo longer term. So this is from the all-time high back on March 14th to, let's say, right about there. Yeah, whales and sharks are moving up, getting more of the coins that people are shedding as they panic sell as prices are going down. So that's a good combination that tells me, you know, the dust will eventually settle and the patient traders will likely come out on top here. I, I love to see it. And for anyone who has um, even a moderate amount of trading experience, you'll notice something like this right away as uh, a very, it's a bullish divergence. And uh, you also see this sort of pattern um, as a, um, a really um, beneficial predictive tool with, with indicators like the RSI or the MACD. When you have price going down, but indicators going in the opposite direction, it's usually, or often, I can't say always because that's not the case, but uh, often it is a, a very helpful and encouraging indicator that we may see a pivot pretty soon here. Brian, quick question for you here. I'm wondering if you could explain explain a little bit more about the whale stablecoin holdings here. Um, intuitively, in my mind, I would have thought that, you know, a decrease in stable coins and more liquidity going into Bitcoin would typically be a, a bullish thing. Um, is there more to that? Is 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 there a scenario where seeing them both go up would be, yeah, um, um, I guess more encouraging, or, or how how exactly does that work? Yeah, if if whales are converting stable coins into BTC, that's absolutely a bullish event. You saw especially here in. February, when Bitcoin accumulation started to go nuts, stable coins were going down, Bitcoin was moving up, and boom, you see an all-time high occur shortly after. Uh, sometimes there are instances where they're both going down together, stable coins here in red and blue, and Bitcoin in terms of its percentage in bright green and overall amount of Bitcoin in dark green, that usually leads to drops like what we saw in mid-August. Uh, a couple of months before price, the bull run basically started. Uh, this, to me, was kind of an anomaly here. When we looked at October and we saw that Bitcoin was going down along with stable coins, even though Bitcoin's price was going up, you know, it's it was a weird situation where everyone was waiting for the ETFs. There were a lot of false narratives coming out. If you remember the uh, news publication that posted uh, like a few weeks early about the ETFs being released um, and they were wrong about it and they had to apologize. Like there were some weird things going on here, but normally if these lines are moving the same direction altogether, prices usually go down. Uh, and if they're moving up together, prices are usually going up. Uh, but if you have, if you see kind of a split, like we've been seeing lately, where whales are going up and stable coins are going down, favor the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is going to matter a bit more in this kind of situation. Um, and it just look at it as kind of an ultra bullish signal if you see both going up together. So like if we go back to 2021, we see right here, for example, June of 2021 up until let's say August, huge, huge rebound as new fiat here was coming in, moving into crypto, whether it was stable coins or Bitcoin, a lot of whales were deciding this was the dip to buy back when we were at around 32K or so, we got as low as 29K. And then it, it prices just absolutely take off because this was a sign that it wasn't just stable coins converting to Bitcoin. This was fiat moving into stable coins and then stable coins also going into bitcoin 
So that's ideal. And then when you saw all of them start to go down, yeah, prices followed pretty, pretty steadily. This was a very good alpha uh, indicator as to where markets were going to go next. So for now, going back to, let's say, the last three months, I think we're fine. I think we're fine as long as this dark green line is still going up and uh, hopefully stable coins go up as well, indicating that there's some money coming in from bank accounts into crypto, meaning there's fresh market cap being produced in cryptocurrency once again. That makes a ton of sense. So uh, I'll try to explain it and just let me know if if, um, if this is um, an accurate summary here. So what we're seeing now is the Bitcoin's price taking a dip. We are seeing um, whale wallets who are holding between 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 and 10,000 Bitcoin um, increase over the last couple of, uh, last week even. Yeah. Um, and that is a very good sign, of course, because when the, or basically these types of whales uh, and the moves that they make are the most impactful moves that will affect Bitcoin's price. So if they're holding, then that is a very strong support for the future direction of Bitcoin. When it comes to the stable coins, um, not only could that be a, uh, a helpful uh, indicator of you know what whales are doing with their with their dry powder essentially, um, but it can also tell us basically how much money is entering and exiting the market in general. So, in in a very general sense, the more mark or the more liquidity in the market, the more bullish it is for the market. Um, I think I think I, I think I think I'm running it right there. Does yeah. that all kind of make sense here? Yeah, you nailed it. More more money in crypto in general is a good thing, whether it's in stables or Bitcoin. But if you had to choose one, you want to see stables going into Bitcoin in terms of whale wallets specifically, uh, because that's that's just an indication that Bitcoin's network is pumping and you know. As Bitcoin is is being bought, some of that can funnel into altcoins, and then just non-stablecoin crypto market caps tend to expand from there. Amazing, amazing! And just to also clarify, these stablecoin coin holdings aren't just any regular stablecoin holders. These are wallets that have between um, for USDT, I'm seeing between a hundred thousand and ten million um, dollars worth of or tokens worth of USDT, which is essentially. Right. 100,000 to $10 million worth of stable coins in their wallet. So these, again, are the, the mega whales, the, the mega influencers of uh, market or of Bitcoin price direction. And also this gives us an incredible insight into where liquidity is, where money is, and how things are flowing between Bitcoin, altcoins, into and out of the market. Uh, so I can very much see the value that this this indicator and this metric has here, Brian. Um, this is this is huge. This is really interesting. Yeah, it's it's probably the number one chart that I'm checking on on a daily basis to update the community. So uh, I think it's it's vital that we just continue to see Bitcoin staying high in terms of the shark and wallet holdings right now. Um, also, seeing that the supply and exchanges is staying very low is very important. You see this big drop here that happened. Uh, just prior to the all-time high, that was a good sign that we weren't going to see any imminent sell-offs. And sure enough, a week later, we see that all-time high. And overall, the, the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges is staying very low, meaning the likelihood of a major sell-off continues to be very low and risk-free. Uh, that's That's been one of the most encouraging signs that I've been seeing that drop happen in uh, supply held on exchange since the previous all-time highs and that's been a constant trend for a very long time and just to make sure that this is clear for everyone hanging out with us the reason why this metric is important and what it actually means is supply held on the exchange the theory is when this metric goes up that means that people are actually taking their bitcoin and putting it on an exchange with the intent to take profits and we don't want to see that so seeing this line be nice and low means that the amount of Bitcoin on the exchanges right now is very low, meaning that there people are holding, people don't want to sell, people don't want to take profits because their conviction is bullish. So what do we have here? 
actually, I know exactly what this is, and I'm really excited to chat about it. But maybe you can give us a quick uh, a quick rundown. Yeah, this is the perpetual contract funding rate on various exchanges. We're looking at uh, Binance, DYDX, Deribit, and BitMEX specifically. And going through them one at a time, we can see there's actually quite a few shorts. Let me zoom in here to like just the past week. Perfect. And Brian, I'm just, uh, while you're doing that here, uh, those were a lot of big words. And there may be a lot of people here who are, are quite new to crypto, quite new to trading. Um, are you able to kind of just elaborate a little bit on how funding rates um, are, or how they can be interpreted, what they mean, and um, why we're looking at it right now? Yeah, funding rates are important because they're basically the ratio of longs, which are bets in favor of the market, versus shorts, which are bets against the market. Uh, and the ratio is looking at how many longs there are versus shorts. If there's a high ratio of longs, that means that longs are actually paying shorts in order to open up their margined and leveraged longs because they're feeling greedy and they want to get as much uh, profit out of a bull run as they can. And that tends to be when markets correct, because when there's a, a big extreme in one direction, markets are bound to try to liquidate those, those big leveraged uh, um, positions that are open. And that's exactly what happened here at the end of March. You see these huge spikes of longing followed by this big drop the next day um, where prices actually fell below 65K for the first time in a while. So you want to see something more like what we're seeing now, which is a lot of shorts forming uh, that indicate people are betting against the market and they're hoping that uh, prices will go even lower. And if these shorts get liquidated, they'll base, the money will basically be uh, used as rocket fuel to push prices back up to, you know, above 65, even above 70. However many liquidations uh, there are that are available, they'll be used to push prices up, assuming these shorts stay pretty prominent. But as you can see, this is the most frequent we've seen these shorts pop up in at least the past month. I can go back like six months and you'll probably not see a lot of shorts either. Maybe a few way back here at the beginning of January. But yeah, it's nothing like it is now. <clears throat> so that's DYDX. Deribit looks about neutral. Bitmex had some shorts going on, but they've kind of gone away for now. And Binance is still pretty neutral. But at the very least, we're not seeing any of this anymore. Not a lot of bright green and people that are optimistic about the markets, which probability-wise increases the likelihood of markets going up now that it can do so with little resistance and not a lot of people getting rewarded on big margined and leveraged positions that they had open. No, it, uh, that um, that's actually very encouraging to see. I've been looking forward to this as a as a bullish signal now for a while. And as like over the last little while, as those bullish positions, those long positions have been increasing, as we've been seeing those massive green spikes in funding rates, I've been getting more and more nervous. So this one can seem a little bit counterintuitive uh, because you would think that the more people are bullish, the higher price is going to go. But this one actually kind of works the opposite way. And um, I think the best way for me to wrap my brain around this is I kind of link it to what we'll be looking at pretty soon here is the actual um, market sentiment. The more bullish um, sentiment gets, the more bullish people are in positions, in long positions, the more likely that price is going to um, take advantage of that and go the opposite direction so that, they, so that they get wrecked. But same in the opposite. The more bearish sentiment it is, the more bearish people are in uh, short positions money wants to make more money. So they want to wreck those people, liquidate their positions and go the opposite direction as well. Is that a fair assessment, Brian? That's right. Yeah. Markets tend to move the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation. And you'll often see funding rates be a good, uh, you know, capture of how the crowd is leaning. Sometimes you'll see a difference between how people are 
actually placing their bets in the markets versus the commentary, which you mentioned social volume. I'll show that. Um, we can just go weighted sentiment, which is a great social metric that captures the amount of discussion related to Bitcoin, as well as the ratio of positive versus negative comments related to Bitcoin. So if I look at that chart here, you'll you'll mostly notice the, a similar trend. So super negative as markets were dropping uh, over the last couple of days, the 13th and 14th specifically. And it's kind of gone more neutral over the past 24 hours. But we want to see this. We want to see a lot of negativity and people doubting crypto. Uh, because that's when we see these big bounces. And sure enough, when we saw this negativity the last couple of days, we immediately see a bounce and then the crowd starts getting optimistic again. And as soon as they get optimistic, prices go down again. So it is counterintuitive. When we get into crypto, we assume that when everyone's bullish, they're willing the prices up. But it's actually the little traders that are getting crushed constantly and the whales and sharks dominating. So when you're seeing everyone else leaning very bullish, that's when prices are most likely to correct. When you're seeing everyone leaning very bearish, that's when you see prices most likely to bounce. And you see tons of examples just looking at this chart. Super bullish here on April 8th, immediate correction. Super bearish here, prices rebound. Super bearish here, prices rebound. Even super bearish here, prices rebound until everyone gets optimistic and then prices crash. It's it's like clockwork and it's just how the markets ebb and flow. And you have to be on the opposite side of the extreme reactions if you want to make money. It's pretty uncanny to see how tightly correlated this is and makes me very excited to dive back into the charts and keep a very close eye on how this is going to react in the future. And one thing I'm noticing is that the most dramatic shifts happen with the most extreme highs and lows in sentiment or sentiment in um, um, funding rates and all of these things here. Uh, but even these small like dips and ebbs and flows do have a significant impact enough to where someone who may be taking short or medium term positions can really capitalize on this. So there's a ton of value here, Brian, and I really do appreciate you sharing this with us. And it does for sure shed a lot of light as to why we're seeing such a dramatic dip right now. Yeah, man, I, I think that's accurate. Uh, you, you certainly can get some midterm value out of this if you're simply watching from the sidelines and seeing where extremes are forming in, in terms of traders' opinions, you can capitalize uh, multiple times in the past month if you just track this chart by itself um, and then supplementing it with things like funding rate and whale and shark behavior, you can quickly pick up on, on just a ton uh, in terms of you know, how people are perceiving markets, how it can be taken advantage of, you want to basically try to align yourself with the big key stakeholders uh, and what they're doing and avoid what the little guys are doing. Oh, I love it. So we've seen a couple of very strong and powerful indicators so far here. We've seen the whale holdings and we've seen that it's looking pretty favorable right now. Uh, we've looked at the funding rates also looking more favorable for the bullish bias. And uh, we're looking at the sentiment tracker which right now is is kind of the opposite. It's looking a little bit bearish, but I'm hoping and wondering that we've seen the price reaction now. And um, yeah, we, we will see how that goes over the next uh, couple of days, couple of hours even here. So um, real quick, I just want to take a moment, just kind of reset the room here. Um, I want to acknowledge that we've been chatting for about 30 minutes already there, Brian, and I, and I very much, I respect your time. I respect your energy here. So uh, I want to just quickly acknowledge that, um, um, yeah, I, you know, we, we agreed upon the 30 minutes. So I just want to make sure that you're in a good place to continue to go. I just want to throw that ball into your court. Whenever you do have to leave us, just know that, um, no pressure or expectation. Also, I just want to take one more moment and thank everyone here. Who's joining us today. My name is Trav. I'm with Web3 Matters, and uh, we're out here highlighting the best in Web3 so that we can all grow together. 
And my guest here today is Brian. He's part of the Santiment team, which has developed an incredible tool that analyzes on-chain data as well as social sentiment and 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 presents it in a way that is incredibly intuitive and useful for anyone in the crypto market here. So, Brian, I'm gonna hand the right mic right back to you here, and uh, let's 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 take it away. Are the words that yeah. I was looking for? Thanks for that, Trev. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll just kind of. I think this will be the last topic for today and we'll we'll do more maybe when we touch base again next week or two weeks from now but we want to also note the fact that among our top trending tokens right now that we're tracking bitcoin and ethereum are number one and two and that's actually not normal they may get the lion's share of discussion on a day-to-day -day basis but in order to pop up on this trending coins page they need to be getting an extreme amount of discussion, even compared to their, their normal uh, expected discussion rates on a day to day basis. So Bitcoin, for example, is being talked about a lot more because everyone's jumped off the altcoin train and they're now speculating whether they should you know, move their altcoins into Bitcoin or move their Bitcoin out of crypto completely and into fiat because we're about to see a big bear market. and. 2024 isn't the year that they thought it was going to be because of this correction. A lot of panic. Even with the having three days away, uh, it's not enough to really excite people right now. When they see this kind of price drop, uh, you can see that the Hong Kong ETFs had their, their fun in the sun, but they're already kind of fizzling out in terms of excitement, which I think is due to the fact that prices have been dropping throughout this story. And unlike when everyone was getting hyped about the U.S. ETFs in, you know, October, November and December and prices were going way up, uh, the hype around this one, obviously, Hong Kong is, is a lot smaller of a uh, region compared to US, the U.S. and has less impact. But it's also this news story has just been kind of buried due to the fact that uh, markets have been bleeding like crazy while um, the Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs were approved by Hong Kong just uh, a little under two days ago. And Ethereum, it's the same thing. I mean, there are some exciting things. You can see the bullish summary here. Um, the approval of BTC and in, in the ETFs in Hong Kong, the increasing demand for staked Ethereum, positive sentiment toward Ethereum NFTs. I don't know how, how big of a deal that is right now. NFTs are getting crushed. But um, you can also see the bearish explanation. Price struggling to recover above 3,200. It's actually down to 3,000. So this is maybe day old news now. Um, in a short Ethereum gamma position, I believe that's a, a technical trader analysis. Recommendation from QCP Capital to deploy high convexity, zero downside risk strategies. It's all kind of in the in the weeds here, but the point is, BTC and Ethereum are being talked about a lot, mostly because of the absence of excitement related to altcoins, uh, which is new. Of, over the last six months, it's been kind of the altcoin party and which ones can we jump in on. But uh, slowly but surely, as we corrected from the all-time high five weeks ago, the narrative has shifted toward, you know, we better stay in the big caps right now because the altcoins are are all flushing down the toilet right now. So that's how I'm seeing it. Gotcha, Brian. So I'm going to leave you with one final question here. We've, um, we've gone over some, some highly valuable insights here that you've, you've provided us with. We've taken a look at social metrics, social sentiment. We're seeing that Bitcoin and Ethereum are being spoken about like crazy based on all of this. What, are your expectations, financial advice aside, we're not going there. How do you think price is going to react once the, the halving happens in three days based on what we've seen today? Yeah, I actually don't think there's going to be a serious move in either direction. I think the, I think the past six months in that big bull run was mostly due to the anticipation of the ETFs and the halving. Those two big topics really drove a lot of optimism, not just from small traders, but from sharks and whales 
into the markets and wanted to get more exposure into crypto. And that, of course, led to great things and this huge expanded market caps that we're still enjoying today compared to, you know, the 30K levels that we were seeing six months ago. So we're still over twice the value that we were compared to them, compared to them. But we want to be mindful of the fact that the actual event itself is already a foregone conclusion. And when something is a foregone conclusion and there's not really any feasible way that the having won't happen, then the event itself is just kind of a, a null event. It, it just is the date in which we all knew that the difficulty for mining was going to be doubled and uh, the supply of Bitcoin will for the next four years be half as um, consistent in producing as it was the previous four years. So with that said, uh, I don't I don't think that the event itself is going to have any significant uh, price impact unless the crowd, you know, creates a self-fulfilling prophecy and they get super euphoric all of a sudden. And then, it, you know, the whales might just send the markets down because they they have these opportunities to sell at 70K again. Um, or they get super fearful and the, the whales will scoop up at 55 or 60K again. But the 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 price impact more or less has already happened just from the past three to six months of anticipation for this event that is a foregone conclusion. And I think it's going to be basically just more of the same and we can look at the amount of fear going on combined with the amount of accumulation still going on with sharks and whales and understand that the the likely direction is just going to be based on those patterns continuing to form. And right now, I, I think it looks more like a bullish divergence than a bearish one. Uh, I, I don't think that April 19th is going to be the day that we suddenly go to the moon. It's happened before, so maybe it could. But um, I, I believe it's going to be more gradual than people expect. And if you're trying to make a play where you accumulate on the 18th and sell on the 20th, you're, you're probably going to be wasting your time compared to simply just getting what you want to own now and then watching the price gradually go up, hopefully, knock on wood, over the next couple months. And then you can, you know, take profit on what you will from there. Amazing. Uh, that, um, the message that you're leaving us with today, Brian, is one that I was hoping we would get at. And that's... Um, Basically, my takeaway from that is that how important it is to break through the hype, to break through the narrative, to break through the emotions and pay attention to what's most important. And it all comes back down to supply and demand. And um, that is abundantly clear using on-chain data, using Sentiment, your tool, and using these incredible trackers uh, for things like whale wallets, for things like social sentiment, for things like funding rate, that basically tells us everything that we need um, that is actually actionable, as opposed to hype or FUD that's happening on X. So Brian, I just wanna thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us today, for sharing this valuable information here. Um, this is exactly what I was hoping we'd get at is just real answers to what's happening and a realistic way to manage your expectations moving forward. And I think we absolutely nailed it today here, Brian. So any final words for you? No, always a pleasure, Trav. I think what you guys are doing are great. And I'm always happy to come on and talk markets with you guys. Looking forward to uh, seeing what kind of questions and comments arise from what we talked about today. And, uh, you know, just wishing everyone a safe and happy next week or two of trading until we catch up again. Excellent. Hey, shared sentiment there, Brian. I will uh, be posting links to um, to sentiment and the tools will include a free trial on uh, on our streams here on X and on YouTube. Uh, feel free to give them a follow on, on X and uh, make sure to jump into their Discord. They're great with answering any questions you may have. And uh, besides that, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time. It's been a very awesome, uh, awesome time here today. We've learned a ton and uh, much thanks to you there, Brian. Appreciate you and all the work that you're doing. Thanks, Trav. 
Excellent. Take care, guys. Take care.